Hello and welcome to News Now. I am Omobolanli Adeshui. Amid the worsening insecurity across the country, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Irabo, has assured Nigerians that the 2023 general elections will hold. Speaking during the media parley on Tuesday at the defense headquarters in Abuja, General Irabo said the military will do everything possible to ensure that nothing stops the poll from holding. The defense chief also reiterated the commitment of the military to protecting the democratic ideals in Africa's most populous nation. According to him, the military has made a covenant to protect Nigeria's democracy and it has not changed its position. The parley is meant to solicit the support of the media organizations towards tackling the security challenges in the country. It is the second in the series of engagements between the chief of defense staff and executives, editors of media organizations in Nigeria. And still on insecurity, the chief of defense staff, General Lucky Rabo, has said those behind the Owa attacks have been arrested. During a meeting with editors and media executives in Abuja, the chief of defense staff confirmed that the Owa attackers had been nabbed. Though he did not reveal the number of arrested suspects, Irabo stated that the attackers were arrested during joint operations involving the armed forces, the Department of Security Services, and the police. He said the suspects would be paraded after an investigation had been concluded into the matter. Meanwhile, Ondo State Governor Oluwaruti Miyakiridulu has confirmed the arrest of five suspected attackers of St. Francis Catholic Church, Owo, which left 40 people dead. The Ondo State Security Network, Amoteku, has intercepted about 168 persons suspected to be invaders as they were moving into the state from the northern part of the country. The men were hiding in two trucks under some cows and motorcycles conveying them from the northern part. They are mainly middle-aged men. Some charms were recovered from the invaders by a Motekun Corps. Parading the invaders at the head office of a Motekun in Ondo State, the commander of the agency in the state, Adetunji Adileye, noted that they were suspiciously hiding inside the trucks. He said after interrogation, the suspects could not give a satisfactory reason for coming to the state. Adele appealed to residents of Ondo State to always be on alert and notify the Amoteko of any strange persons in their vicinity. The chairman of the Hausa community in Ondo State, Bala Omar, dissociated himself and his members from the invaders. He said on several occasions he had warned against the influx of such persons without a mission to the state. It will be recalled that last week the Amotekon Corps apprehended 151 invaders from the northern part of the country, hiding inside two trucks, loading bags of beans in Akure. And now to health matters. The number of confirmed Lassa fever infections since the beginning of 2022 is now 857, according to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC. Data from the report for week 30, which covered July 25 to 31, revealed that there were 5,990 suspected cases of the disease in the week under review. In week 30, the number of new confirmed cases is the same as reported in week 29, 2022, with 10 cases. These were reported in Undo, Edo, and Belchi State. Cumulatively, from week 1 to week 30, 2022, 164 deaths have been reported with a case fatality rate CFR of 18.9%, uh, which is lower than the CFR for the same period in 2021, 22.8%. And UNICEF Nigeria has congratulated the Kebbi State Government on signing into law the State Child Rights Bill passed by the State House of Assembly. In a statement issued by the agency, the Children's Fund also called on the State Government to allocate and release adequate resources as well as put in place mechanisms for full implementation of the law to grant children the rights enshrined in it. The Kebbi State Child Protection Bill was signed into law by the State Governor Abubakar Bagudu at the weekly Executive Council meeting at the Government House in Barani Kebbi. The Governor also signed into law the Prohibition of Violence Against Individuals Bill during the weekly Executive Council meeting. According to the statement of the UNICEF representative in Nigeria, 
Peter Hawkins. Quote, we congratulate the government and people of Kebbi State on this momentous achievement. UNICEF called that the law is gazetted without delay, Hawkins added. The statement further called on the state government that are yet to domesticate the Nigeria Child Rights Act to do so without any further delay. On the Africa scene, at least eight people were killed and six others missing in South Korea as heavy rainfall drenched the greater Shell region, turning the affluent streets of Gangnam into a river of submerged vehicles and overwhelming public transport systems. Commuters were slowly returning to work Tuesday morning after emergency crews worked overnight to clean up much of the mess. But there were concerns about further damage as torrential rain was forecast for the second day in a row. While most of the Shell metropolitan area's subway services were back to normal operations, around 80 roads and dozens of riverside parking lots remained closed due to safety concerns. The rain began Monday morning and intensified through the evening hours. It flooded streets and subway stations and damaged nearly 800 buildings in Seoul and nearby cities. Nearly 800 buildings were damaged while more than 400 people were forced to evacuate from their homes, the Ministry of the Interior and Safety said. Rescue workers failed to reach three people who called for help before drowning at a basement home in the Guanak district of Southern Shell Monday night. Three people were found dead in the debris of a collapsed bus station and a landslide in the nearby cities of Guangzhou and Huaxiang. The country's weather agency maintained the heavy rain warning for the Shell metropolitan area and nearby regions on Tuesday. The precipitation may reach 5 to 10 centimeters an hour in some areas. It said around 10 to 35 centimeters of rain was expected across the capital region through Thursday. And the aftermath of the deal signed in Qatar to launch peace talks in Jamina has generated mixed reactions between Chadians back home. While some Chadians welcomed the new agreement between the country's military government and more than 40 opposition groups, others believe the problem is far from being resolved after the main rebel group refused to take part. Nine rebel groups had rejected the deal, saying the negotiators had not listened to its demands, including the release of prisoners. The rejection by fact and at least eight other rebel factions cast a pall over celebrations of the agreement, which was hammered over out after months of talks with Qatar's capital. Chad has endured repeated uprisings and unrest since independence in 1960. The dialogue aims to agree on the rules for a presidential election that Debbie has promised by October. And Kenya's presidential hopeful William Ruto cast his ballot on Tuesday in his own village of Sugoi as polls opened for Kenya to elect a new leader. Having served as President Uhuru Kenyatta's deputy for the entirety of his two terms, Ruto is looking to topple Kenyatta-backed veteran politician Raila Odinga for the top seat. Outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta, the son of Kenya's first president, cut across the usual ethnic lines and angered Ruto by backing longtime rival Odinga after their bitter 2017 election contest. Kenyatta, who was also seen voting, says he is hopeful for a peaceful transition of power. If Nida wins more than 50%, Kenya would be forced to hold a runoff for the first time in its history.